Reading Thursday the 4th of February, our focus today is looking at inference skills and what they mean. Read the text carefully or listen to the audio recordings. Please reread the text to answer your questions and refer to the text to give quality answers. Today we will be developing inference skills. So what is inference? Inference is where we read between the lines to gain a greater understanding of what we are looking at to reach, a lo to reach logical conclusions. So we're trying to make a decision in our head based on some of the clues that have been given in the text. The answer isn't just written out in words for us so we can just lift it out like retrieval. We have to like be a detective, search for those clues in between the lines. So if we look over to the left hand side of the screen, Clues may be given in the text, but it doesn't give you clear answers like with retrieval questions. Some clues are given in the text and you might decide, you must decide what you learn from them. This is called developing inference skills. It can also be called reading between the lines. That is because it doesn't actually tell you the answer in words. Okay, let's use some inference skills looking at this picture. Who's in the picture? No one's told you, but you're trying to make some conclusions by looking at them. Look at the clues around it. Is it hot or cold in the mountains? How do you know that? What clues do you have on the screen? How does the mountaineer feel? Why has the mountaineer chosen to climb to this location? Again, we've not been told any of this information. We're looking around for clues and a bit like in a text we're, we're looking around the text to see what's been described in words telling us how someone responds or looks here's another example of using our inference skills using a picture so what's happening in this picture look closely look at the face look at the hair look at the clothing how does the child feel about it how do you know they've not told us anything but where can we get some clues from about how they might be feeling? Why isn't the child wearing a top? So we're starting to use all the information again to work out, come to a conclusion, come to a result that we believe is as accurate as it can be based on the clues from the picture. And again, linking it to our book is looking at all those clues on a page or in a book that we've read to try and make a conclusion, a decision about something. So remember, one, clues may be given in the text, but it doesn't give you clear answers. Number two, some clues are given in the text and you must decide what you learn from them. And number three, the answer is not written in words there are clues described about a person or a setting. You've got to try and find them, and then you've got to connect them, join them, and come to your own decision in your head as to how you could think you could best answer an inference question. A flock of birds cross, crosses the sky, but under the beating sun you can hardly see it. Now you've arrived in the Valley of the Queens. It's, it's an amazing place. The valley holds the tombs of the wives and the children of the pharaoh. Everyone's working hard. Foremen, workers, masons, carpenters, bricklayers, sculptors, painters. And wait a minute, isn't that arch architect over there on the right? The air burns the dust and smells. It's hard to find a path through the men, but as but at last you make it to the entrance of the tomb they're building. A well-hidden valley. The Valley of the Queens, also called the Seat of Beauty, is a few miles from Thebes. Nearly 100 tombs of wives, daughters or sons of the pharaohs are found here. Just nearby is the Valley of the Kings the necropolis, necropolis, city of the dead, of the kings of the new empire, 1580 to 
1085 BC, the pharaohs in this period decided not to build pyramids anymore, but instead to dig underground tombs to protect themselves from tomb robbers. And there are lots of people who want to steal the treasure and the gold and is always buried with the dead. So the clever architects designed tombs that couldn't be broken into. Watch out, you are not supposed to be here. You've managed to get right into the funerary chamber of the late Queen Nefetari, the most royal, most famous royal wife. So no expense has been spared in her tomb. It looks enormous. Using a flame torch you found at the entrance, make your way into the depth of the tomb. <clears throat> it's cold in here. When you've gone down lots of steps, you arrive in the first chamber. Painting of the queen decorate paintings of the queen decorate each wall. They celebrate her great beauty. The ceiling is painted blue and studded with stars. It looks exactly like a magnificent night sky. Now you're in a, in a chamber filled to the brim with objects. The, you study them and ser, study them hard, searching for clues. In between the coffins are jewels and decorated furniture. You don't know which way to turn. You know that after this, there's only one more chamber, the chamber of the sarcophagus. Will you dare to go in there or not? Take great care. You might make the gods angry. A sarcophagus for eternity. After death, a dead person is taken into the embalming workshop. The embalmers wash the corpse. Then they remove the brain either by piercing a hole in the skull or by pulling it out through the nostrils using a hook. Yuck! Next, they remove the internal organs, liver, intestines, lungs, stomach. Then the body is covered in a kind of salt called natron. This conserves it. Forty days later, the dried corpse is rubbed with balm and wrapped up in about ten metres of linen bandages. Magic amulets and jewels are placed between the bandages. After seventy days' work, the mummy is ready to be laid in its sarcophagus. As you get, in, as you get to the exit, you can hear someone running away. Strange! On the wall, an inscription about a lion attracts your attention. You hadn't noticed it on your way down into the tomb. Some hieroglyphs are painting on the stone. You go closer to examine them. Can you decipher the message? Using the key below, decode the hieroglyphics to discover what curse threatens Pharaoh. You must run back up the steps, holding the Eye of Horus amulet that's around your neck tight in your fist and arrive outside completely out of breath. Hieroglyphs a sacred writing. Hieroglyph writing appeared in the valley of the Nile around 3200 BC. At first each sign meant that meant one thing, an object, an action, a, a living being and so on. So, for example, a fish would be represented by the picture of a fish. But in order to write about more abstract things like feelings, the scribes invented signs that represent a particular sound, more like our language. Hieroglyphs are written along a line or up and down in a column. They are only used on important religious monuments. The light of the desert burns your eyes. The curse is really frightening but it meant that you're dis you've discovered some important information. You could, have, you could have written it. You'd better get out of here before someone catches you. Now go to the town centre, the temple, the upper festival, or the royal palace. You decide. Write full sentence answers using clues to develop your inference skills from the text. Please explain in your own words why you use the clues to answer the questions below. 
Question one, on page 12, how would it feel to live in the Valley of the Queens? Number two, on page 13, how did ancient Egyptians feel about, the, about tomb robbers? Number three, on pages 14 and 15, describe how you feel as you search through the chambers. What are you worried about? What are you excited about? Remember, write them in your own words and refer to clues in the text. Be a text detective and join up the clues to develop your inference skills. Now share your work with someone and take a photo of it and send it into school using Edmodo. Thank you.